On this episode, we pulled up to Houston Truck Wash and Lube in Houston, Texas. For the past 12 years, Daryl Palmer and his team have been keeping owner-operators, truck and bus fleets clean and ready for the road. Daryl's no stranger to hard work. In fact, he got his start in the business at 12 years old following his father's footsteps. Today, the family business does $2 million per year. You can go to Houston Truck Wash and Lube for truck washes as well as routine truck maintenance. In this episode, Daryl breaks down the economics of owning a truck wash business and some of the numbers will surprise you. He breaks down his costs, where the business makes the most profit, and his game plan for the future. So if you smell something burning, it's only a desire. I'd like to welcome everyone to Truck and Hustle. All right, all right, Hustle Fam, Hustle Fam, we are back with another amazing episode, and I am at what I feel it, feel like is my second home these days, man, Houston, <laughs> Texas, at Houston Truck Wash and Lube with the president himself, Daryl Palmer. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Man, uh, Truck and Hustle, man, welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. For sure. So, in this show, we like to talk about the fact that the riches are in the niches, right? There's so many different ways to make a career, make a living for yourself in this industry. And, uh, you know, whether you're on a truck, driving a truck, you know, brokering trucks, whatever, right? But we never talk about washing and maintaining the trucks, right? So, uh, when we connected, I thought it would be a really, really interesting show to talk about the economics and the business behind that, right? Because that is obviously a very important part. You have to keep your trucks maintained. You got to keep your trucks clean. Absolutely. Keep them looking pretty. And that's what you guys do here at Houston Truck Wash, man. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate appreciate you for having me. All right, for sure. So let's get into it. Before we get into the, the business, we always like to dive into the story a little bit and try to understand like how you got here, man. So are you from Houston? Let's t- talk about your backstory a little bit. Yeah, I'm originally from here in Houston, Texas. Um, my grandfather who originally i'm third generation okay uh, how old are you i'm 33 33 okay yes, cool. sir so uh my grandfather was born and raised in alabama and he was the oldest of 16 and um he quit school at nine years old uh to go to work because his dad obviously there wasn't enough food on the table right for all the little brothers and sisters so he went to go work at a grocery store and by the time he was 11 he was the manager of that grocery store. Stop playing. 11 years old. <laughs> true story. He was the manager of that grocery store. Come on, man. 11 and, uh, years old. That's you know, wild. every week at the end of the week, he'd bring, you know, it wasn't much back in the day. He'd bring whatever he had, uh, and there still wasn't enough food on the table. Uh, he'd come home, and there wouldn't be dinner. All the brothers and sisters, you know, ate all the food. Um, so he did that until about 15. And when he was 15, he hopped a train and he went all the way to California and picked fruit uh, for two years. My, you know, there was no cell phone, right, of course. You know, phones, letters, nothing, you know, like that. So uh, he came back to Alabama when he was 17, almost 18, and he joined the United States Army. And the very first day that he was in the Army was the very first time he had three meals in a day oh wow very first time wow um so just thinking about that you know in today's terms is it's crazy i mean i still know a lot of people in the world you know are suffering like that but yeah, for sure. just you know thinking about that here you know you'd never you know a lot of people here have never experienced that yeah. so no me, silver me, spoon man he, he he had it rough me included so um so he was in the army for 27 years he retired as a sergeant major in the army and uh, when he retired, you know, he needed that next next thing in life, what to do. You know, how is he going to continue to feed his family? Because Army pay was, you know, retirement pay was only, uh, oh, man, I think it was like mm, a couple hundred dollars a month yeah, at, at best. I could imagine at so that time. So my dad, being the youngest of four boys, eating everything in the house, um, my grandfather decided to start a pressure washing, steam cleaning company okay what year um, is this you remember uh i believe it was 1971 two so you're looking at 50 years ago now okay uh and my dad was about 12 years old when he started uh working with my grandfather okay. and my o- older uh uncles uh out on the oil field you know grinding and getting it um pipe 
um, just all the drilling rigs for uh, Exxon onshore and offshore. They'd go out. They would um, use a helicopter and and uh, lift my grandfather's equipment up and take it all the way out to the pads out there in the in the Gulf and bring it back. And at a different time, you know, you didn't need fire you know protection hard hats or nothing right. you just show well, up they and, were shorts and a sneak some sneakers on man that's do, right do your thing <laughs> absolutely so uh over time it developed and um in the oil field my my grandfather uh and my dad and uncles were in every oil field within 300 miles of houston um so um just over time, it developed, and my dad slowly took it over. My grandfather had gotten a little sick from past stuff in the army. Yeah, and um, and this is the pressure washing business. It's pressure too, right? washing, right? Okay. The only pressure washing. That's all you know they were doing. Got and it. Um, uh, you know, finally, my dad was you know moved over to uh, fleets. My dad was doing big fleets. He had big accounts, and um, my dad's like, you know, well, you know, the city of Houston was really hammering down. Uh, in the early 90s on, you know, dirty water and things like that going into the ground. They still are today, but uh, so my dad needed to change up the model. So uh, my parents put their very first house. I was just barely born, probably six months old. My parents put all their eggs in the basket, put their very first house up for collateral Mm. and were able to uh, buy and build this location that we're at now. Okay. Uh, So my, my parents were all in, you know, if we didn't make it or if they didn't make it, it wasn't going to be a right. you know, good situation. Uh, so my dad hustled and worked seven days a week. I think he finally took his first weekend off, and I was like 13 or 14. Mm. Got it. So <clears throat> holidays, every holiday, birthday. And what year was that that they bought this building here? This was 88, 1988. 80, 88. Do you know how much the startup capital was for that, to purchase this place? Mm, you're looking... Probably about a hundred grand. About a hundred grand. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, when they bought it, was it just the land, or was it already bare land? Bare land. Bare land. Actually, this place used to be like a like a junkyard. This okay. place was full of like old cars and trucks and things like that. So we had to clear all the land and then get all go through all the permit process, which was even strict back then. Right. Um. To 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 build the original building that we have here. So what was the original plan to, to what was the original business plan? So the original plan was to just do truck washing. Okay. That's all he knew. Right. But finally he had enough truck drivers ask to, uh, do the oil changes because truck drivers originally back in the day had to go to all the dealerships, Freightliner, Kenworth, Peterbilt, and they'd be waiting for days because that's all, that's the only people that were doing it. There was no repair shops like there are today. Um, so my dad said, well, how hard can it be? I change all of my pickup truck. Sure, I can do it in a 18-wheeler, <laughs> right. in a semi. Right. So my dad made enough uh, phone calls and, and phone phone book, right? Looked up filter companies, oil companies, you know, places that he could buy grease for and get all the equipment at and, and started rocking and rolling from there. Okay. And at what point do you get involved in the business? I've been around it my <clears throat> whole life. Um so I was, I think the first time I was ever introduced to here was probably in the summertime out of school, five, six years old. I would come up here and, and just kind of watch and mess around and see all the guys, you know, working and stuff like that. I was probably five years old. How was it for you? How was it for you then? Like growing up in this business? Like, what did you, did you look at it as like my dad's got a business or did you look at it like, oh, I don't want to go there again today. Like <laughs> I got to go to the truck wash again today, dad. Like what was your perspective as a kid? Obviously like when you were five, it was different to sure. when you started growing up, but just give me an idea. Like the way you saw this business. I saw it as, you know, my dad was working really hard because he wasn't around as much you know i knew my dad was always at work always at work so i know he was you know putting his time in and stuff like that and i knew even as a little kid like you know my dad is working to provide for what i have i knew you know the toys i have at the house the clothes i have i knew you know because my dad went through that with my grandfather my dad started when he was 12 yeah so i knew you know that upbringing i just knew that you know we're we're a hardworking family, right? You know, we, you get you get what you put into it, and so my dad was here, you know, eighteen hour days all, every all single day. You know, the only time you know he'd be home when I may see him before I go to bed, or I may not see him when I go to be, when I went to bed. Yeah, you know, but I knew you know he was doing things 
for me, for my younger brother, for my mother, for our family. You know, I knew it was for the benefit of us. So, right. What type of lifestyle did it afford afford you as a kid? I mean, I had a wonderful upbringing. I mean, I you know I played every sport. Um, my dad may have you know my dad missed a lot of baseball games, a lot of t-ball games, football games. Uh, but I knew, you know, even though he missed that time, I knew it was for a greater purpose, right. you know? Right. So, um, looking back at it from today, I'm completely thankful. I mean, I, you know, I can't appreciate him wouldn't enough trade for, it for nothing, right? I wouldn't trade it for nothing. You know, the, all the dues that he put in. So got it. So what, what time, what, what, at what point do you really get involved in a business? I mean, obviously when you were a kid, you were probably like messing <clears> around, you know, helping out here and there, but what? When do you start really getting into the business business? I started getting into it probably right there towards the end of high school. Okay. Um, when I'm driving, right? You know, I can come up here in the summertime and work. Yeah. And did you uh, go to college? I did go to college. I okay. went to Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches. What'd you study? Uh, business. Okay. Yes, sir. So I was there for about two years, and then I transferred back here to Houston. Uh, went to U of H. Uh, for a year and uh, I didn't finish uh, college but um, I was you know I was going to night school because I was start working here in yeah. college and um, finally I told my dad I said dad you know I can't I can't do this whole night school all night work all day kind of thing you know I need to you know I want to this is what I want to do I know my calling is right here right and so he gave me that blessing of okay well you know you gotta you know put your dues in even more now if you're not going to you know, finish your degree. So, uh, I did that. I made that decision and, um, I put school off and, and I came here full time. Did you regret not finishing like when in hindsight now looking back? I do. Um, but you know, looking at it today, I think it's unfortunately it's more of who you know than what you know, yeah. you know, today and in, in all aspects of, of business. But, um, uh, there's a part of me that still wants to go back to finish, um, but you know, to do what we do here and and the maintenance side of things and the trucking side of 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 our our industry, I don't think you need a degree. I think you need a you know you need to put your dues in. You need to hustle. Right. And um, and a degree may not always get you that opportunity. You know, opportunity is going to be while you're working. Yeah, hundred percent. So, so you're. I guess you said you did two years and then you did two years so you're around 22 years old when you kind of take over is, I, was, is, I was 22 years old when i came here full-time so you're, you're full-time so what position are you what's your role when you come here full-time uh, i guess you'd call it like a manage, manager position all right so you're looking at the business what what do you see what's old antiquated what are you trying to change because you're bringing fresh new blood into an old business man so what are you thinking about sure so i'm thinking we we were strictly washing and servicing and details. We do details on truck also, uh, but I was looking to getting into the repair side of things, uh, DOT inspections. Um, so we have already implemented that with uh, the inspections and the repairs that need to be done. Um, there's uh, We have a brand new shop right here that we just opened up about a year ago uh, that took two years with, with COVID and everything uh, to finally get the permitting and stuff going. So. Uh, we originally had uh, two bays for washing and one bay for service. Now we essentially have this two bays for for washing, one bay for mechanic work, and we have three for oil changes. Okay, so you had to add those additional bays. Mm -hmm, I did. Okay, got it. So when you when you took over, it was just one bay. It was just one bay for service. Just for service. Yep. Got you. And that was on the on the complete piece of property, right? Just right. one bay. And yep. how how big is this this property? It's a little over an acre. Okay. All right, guys, listen, before we continue the show, I got to give a shout out to our sponsor and our partner, OTR Solutions, formerly OTR Capital. But listen, guys, OTR is much, much more than just a factoring company. They provide so many solutions to help the small carrier not only get into business, but to stay in business and maintain, right? So you guys have to partner with them and check them out. Don't take my advice for it. Talk to their clients. Right? Talk to their clients. Find out what the people are saying. Everybody will tell you the same thing. So make sure you give OTR Solutions a call at 470-900-3338 or click the link in the bio below. Make sure you check them out and tell them Truck and Hustle sent you. 
a little over an acre. All right, and then you add, so you convince your dad, or is, is dad still in the picture? Like, what's going on? He there? comes here every now and then, just okay. to kind of check on things. But oh. he's 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 really not affiliated with the, okay, you know, the day to day. But at, but at that time when you start building it up, or is he still in the picture then? Like, no, no. Okay, so no. he kind of just got out. Yep, and just like here, you got it. That's it. All right, cool. So, so you have to start building some other additional base. So what type of costs did you have to start putting into the business or, or money did you have to put into the business to start building it up to what you wanted it to be? So just the permitting side of everything just to build this one building, and it's about 2,500 square feet, it cost me roughly $36,000. Okay. Just the permit. Just the permit alone. And what is that permit for? What, what does that say? So that, that says that I am able to do um, uh, servicing um and i can have uh water in that building that building was for the structure or the permit was for the structure of the building and um they're real adamant on um flooding here in houston so i had to install um 80 feet long by two feet around pipes i had installed two of those into the ground uh they originally wanted me to move this building that i'm in and build a um uh What's the word I'm thinking of? Um, retention pond. Okay. They wanted me for the water for water because of the water coming off of the roof. And I said, I can't do that. If I do that, then I I lose this ground forever. Yeah. And they said, Well, you can do this other thing, and you can put these pipes in the ground, and it connects to the 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 water drainage coming off of the roof, and that alone cost me forty grand. Wow. So it was expensive. It was very expensive. What What about? Do you have to have any special permits for having like the 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 oils and all that stuff in the building? Like, what does that look like? I do. That's about. It's not as much uh, per year. It's a couple hundred dollars per year. Um, but the initial, you know, I had to buy all brand new um, uh, oil tanks. And when steel was going through the roof, I mean, my oil tanks were over ten thousand mm. dollars a piece, and I got two of them. Uh, so I can store oil, you know, double wall, double wall oil tanks okay. um, to make sure my oil, if something was to happen internally, there's a catch, you know, the outside catch. Um, so if something was to happen over time, which hopefully it doesn't for a long, long time. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. That's, what, what, what about insurance? Insurance went up. So obviously I had insurance just on one building and I have insurance on two. So essentially it, it doubled. It doubled. The it insurance. doubled. And around what do you pay for that? Insurance uh, on both buildings, you're looking at about ten thousand dollars a year. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Got that's it. not garage. That's just to cover the buildings. That's just to cover. That's the not building. garage. That's not having trucks here on the yard. You know, if something was to happen with the trucks. So what is it for that? You have to cover the additional for the trucks too. You're looking at an additional about seventy five hundred dollars a year. See, because the crazy thing is, like, people just look at this and they think it's kind of simple and like, right. Like, it's just trucks getting washed, right? But there's all these different moving parts oh, yeah. that you have to kind of think about. Right. Right? So, all right. So, just to put it in perspective. So, what are all the services that you guys offer right now? Aside from truck washing, tell, tell us about everything you guys do. Wash trucks uh, or equipment, uh, service uh, the semis. We detail and um, everything that goes with uh, details of the truck. So, you know, polishing um the rims polishing the tanks or painting the wheels painting the frame buffing the cab clean the inside we do dot inspections so everything within a dot inspection we can change shocks brakes airbags wheel seals um nothing to do with the motor i'm not trying to do nothing heavy duty and and time consuming so nothing with the motor but anything uh no tires no windshields but uh anything else we pretty much can handle got it that's that's our that's our train. We have a train that's right behind us directly. <laughs> right behind uh, us. Right behind us directly. So we'll be hearing that throughout the podcast. All right. So um, uh, uh, what was the question I was going to ask? All right. So are all the businesses set up under one entity, or do you have them structured because you're? Let's wait for the train to go by. He's done blaring his horn. You're just gonna hear the, the train. <laughs> the ding, ding, ding. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is cool. I don't think that's too bad. You, yeah, that's yeah, good now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so are all the businesses structured under one entity, or do you have it set up like for like, let's say, like the oil changes is one thing, and then like the 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 wash is another thing, just for liability purposes? Or are they all like kind of? Nope. We're all under the same umbrella. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. All right. So, 
let's get into like some of the costs that you have. I mean, obviously, you just now talked about insurance. What is what are your other major costs running this business? I'm going to assume water might be one. Water, <laughs> water's a big one. So, um, uh, water runs me about four to five thousand dollars a month. Okay. Um, so when you're washing a tractor, just a tractor only at fifty five dollars uh, a piece, you got to wash a lot of trucks to get that cost back. Right. On top of paying, you know, the employees. Right. So for for water, like, how do you guys get your water? Like, how does that work? Do you just, it's it's city water. A regular yeah, city water it comes right through the. Through okay, the, mm-hmm. so you don't have any other special equipment around the water. It just comes through, and then you have it like through a machine. Like, how does that work? Yeah, so I have we have oil water separators uh, that are in the ground, so the water will go through the the catch system, and um, you can't you can't keep the water because the water's so dirty coming off of the trucks between oil, grit whatever else that you know the truck may have on it you know we can't do a catch and like re reuse reuse system that would cost a lot of money and we you probably wouldn't even be able to get you know keep 10 percent. so it's the the cost you know far outweighs you know what we could do but anyway it goes through the oil water separator and there's these uh mud catchers about uh i would say 2500 gallons of mud that um comes off of these trucks every single month that i have to then have a company come in and pump that out and take it to the, you know, have it, you know, properly uh, disposed, you know, disposed of. of. And that costs me anywhere from two to three thousand dollars a month just to do that. Oh, wow. So, OK, so in ge- well, like what are your costs on this facility just monthly? Because all these costs <laughs> are like a lot. It's a lot. There, <laughs> there's a lot. I can't give you an exact amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just it's, so roughly like are you like over 100 K like a, like monthly or 50? I'm, I'm probably pushing 50 a month. P- pushing 50 a month just to run the joint. OK, got just it. to keep the lights just on. Just to keep everything. the lights on. Yep. All right. Cool. All right. So we get into the different services. So what is your most popular service here? What do most of your customers come here to do? Oil changes. OK oil changes so they come they get the oil done and then we'll be second second um be the truck washing okay so do you do like uh pms yes per- permanent basis mm-hmm. okay so is it usually like pms guys are coming and doing or are they just like kind of yeah. yeah right okay got it all right how many staff do you have i have 12 guys okay um and what do what do they do how's that broken up so i have uh three guys on the uh maintenance side mm-hmm. i have four guys uh, four to five or four to six guys on the truck washing side. I have two supervisors and I have two guys on uh, details. And how long have they been with you? So of the 12 guys, four of them have been with us for over 20 years. Oh, wow. Another two are pushing 20 years. And two of the guys that are over 20 years, they're right at 25 or 26 years. What's the secret to your attention, man? Uh, Well, you know, you get what you pay for. So you definitely have to pay, you know, the my top two guys have been with us forever and i i couldn't do anything without them so i i pay them pretty nice yeah. um so they they, they helped me 100 percent. i could not we could not you know run this place without them so yeah it's uh you know i would say pay is number one thing and number two i mean you know i i think of us as a family so got it got it you got to definitely have that culture yep right yes sir that culture environment all right cool so um, for, for somebody who wanted to get involved in this type of business, right, um, <laughs> what are some of the things you wanna, you'd want to think about? Um, is location important? Like, what are some of the important things about it? If you want to start a truck wash, like you're watching this video right now, and you're like, I, I want to wash trucks, I want to do service. <laughs> what are some of the, the things you want to think about, and what are some of the challenges that a person would have before they go too far? You might want to think about this. Location, most definitely. I mean, Houston's a big place, but where I am right here, there are more. They did a study however long ago now, but there are more 18-wheelers, more semis within five-mile radius of where I'm at than the whole United States. Get out of here. The whole United States. The Port of Houston's only four miles as a crow flies from here. So right. all the 18-wheelers are right here where okay. I'm at. Okay. So so that that's your new, uh, prime location. This is prime prime area right here where we're at. Okay. Um, you know, uh, Houston's growing. You know, on the west side of town towards Katy and all that. Uh, that's becoming a prime location because there's still you know the land available, but it's going to cost you a, a pretty penny to to be able just to purchase the land. Yeah. Then you got to go through the permitting process. So, what do you think? What do you think the land will cost now? You said you have how many acres? It's a little here? over an acre. So, and I'm right. I'm frontage road. I'm right off the freeway. Today, you're looking at at least a million dollars right off the freeway. Just to start. Just to start. So, Bear land. So, who's your competition? 
Do you have who, like who's who's in? The, do you have any? Other I have some competition. Yeah, I mean, I would say as far as truck washing, my biggest competition, and I can't, you know, I would say I can't really compete with them because they're nationwide. It's Blue Blue Beacon. Okay, you know, they're all over the country. Got it. They got over a hundred locations. They can they can afford to lose at one location, but they make it up in the other. You know, got it. Ninety. So so, how do you compete with them? I try to offer uh, as many discounts as I can when I can. Um, so, like right now, one of my biggest uh, deals is uh, if you do a brake brake change and shoe change with me, uh, I'll give you a free truck wash. I'll give you a free, you know, grease greasing on the truck mm. uh, when you do that with me. I, you know, where Blue Beacon obviously does, they don't do mechanic work; they're strictly truck washing. Right. I try to off in, incorporate that into some of my, you know, specials of you know whatever month it might be at the time. Got it. So you try to offer some different deals yep. to get people. Uh, what, what what are some of the things that you that you would say that your competition does better than you? Does better it's than a trick me? question. I know that is a trick question. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, man, that's that's hard to that's hard to answer. What they do better than me? Um, I really, I really couldn't answer that. You couldn't answer that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, he's smart. He didn't fall into the trap. He said they don't do anything better than me. Yeah, that's so, right. So, so okay, so they don't do anything better than you. So let's let's put it this way: How do you guys stand out? Why does somebody come to you as opposed to going to them? So where I differentiate is, you know, when I give you a price on washing per se, however long it takes me to wash that truck. After I give you that price, you know, as long as it takes. Whereas a bigger corporation like my competition, you know, they're on time limit. They're on time crunch. You know, if they say it's X amount, they may only give you 15 or 20 minutes to wash your truck. And after that, it's, hey, that's that was a price. If you want, you know, more time, it's going to be more money. Where me, I'm not about quantity. I'm about quality. So mm. if it takes me 45 minutes to wash your truck... And, you know, not everybody's perfect. You know, we may miss a spot here and there. But if you point it out, I'm going to make sure it's fixed before you get back on the road. Right. So if it takes us an hour to wash a truck after I've, you know, if I get say, hey, it's $60 because of this and it takes us an hour, that's what it is. Got it. What, what's the industry standard on pricing um, as far as truck washes now? A tractor, you're looking about $55. Uh, truck and trailer, depending on the trailer, is somewhere around 100 Okay, fifty five dollars to hundred. So typically, most of your guys will come in with the combination, both tractor and trailer. Usually, right? And um, how often do you see that customer? What's like the customer lifetime value for for your customers? Probably two to three times a month. Two to three times a month. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Depending on the weather, you never know what kind of weather you get in Houston. Got it. And how like do you have any tracking of like how long you retain the same customer? Uh, not per se, but I can tell you that I have customers here that I have known personally since I was a kid. Really, they've been here that long. Okay, and they've been driving that long. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so th that would be a good indicator of what you guys do better. So, what do they say? Like, why do they keep coming back? Because, um, you know, when my dad was back, you know, here hustling back in the day, and they knew what type of person he was and and the grind that he had, and that's that's what they you know loved about him and this place. So they continue to come back because they know they're going to get one hundred ten percent every single time. Got it. How do you separate the different businesses? Because you do you do several different things here, right? In terms of like your P and Ls and like making sure you're profitable. Like, what does that look like for you? Like when you're looking at the 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 money, right? Like you're doing washes, you're doing oil change. How do you understand pricing? How do you understand like the margins you need to make for everything? Like, can you explain that a little bit? Sure. So uh, it's gonna sound crazy what I'm about to say, but <laughs> on the truck washing side, there's really not any money to be made. Okay. If you're just a strict truck truck washing business, there's not there's no money to be made in that today. Okay. Um, so that mean does that mean that the the money that you're spending on water uh, does not and it, it does not equal, so you're gonna you're you're like kind of like it's a wash, <laughs> For, no pun intended. Right. Right. Like the money that you have to spend on water and to run the business and for staff. You don't really make much money on that for what you charge for the service. Right. It's more of an added service on the oil change side. Oil changes is where, for me, oil cha oil changes and details is where the money is to be made. Okay. Um, well, the washing is just an added service today. You know, a long time ago, uh, my dad was the only guy in town or one of the few guys in town. Um, so the money was, you know, good. It was profitable. Just more volume? More volume. Um 
So today, there's really not too much money to be made in, in washing between uh, just everything that goes into that. Uh, it's more of just an added service today. Okay, got you. So the, no no real money made on, on the washing the truck. Unfortunately. So it's the oil chains that where you're really able to make some money. Right. Um, so for that, when you're looking at that, where, where, you guys kind of... Where do you kind of, kind of get your stuff that you oil? Do you use a specific type of oil? Like, can you tell me about that business a little bit? Sure, I use all the major brands that you know there are out there. I use um, Mystic, which is a uh, a product of Sitco Lubricants. I use Dello, which is from Chevron, uh, Mobil, uh, Delvac, and then I use uh, Shell, Rotella, the top four major brands. Okay, and you get that delivered by the what? Like, how does that oil come to you? I get that straight from uh, you know their top uh, distributors. Okay, but you you get it by like the like little ga- uh, gallon or like I get it in gallon and I get it in bulk also. Okay, okay, got it. How how much oil do you have to order monthly to like keep up? Monthly, um, well, I'll put it to you this way: uh, on a weekly basis, I'm going through about fifteen hundred to two thousand gallons a week. Okay. It's a lot of oil. Yeah, these tru- <laughs> these trucks take anywhere from ten to thirteen gallons. So right, you know, right. Okay, so so like how far ahead are you ordering when you're like doing your purchase orders? Like, like how how far ahead are you looking to make sure you always like? Do you ever run out of oil? Like, no. Uh, okay. Uh, I make sure I'm uh, at least probably uh, three to four weeks ahead. Okay. Uh, just in case there is some kind of uh, supply chain issue, um, you know, they then you know if maybe a week goes by where I wasn't to get anything i can you know i still have enough for two or three weeks and then i can you know they can catch up on their end okay how important has uh credit been for your business do you use credit at all are you more cash for ca- like cash cash business like you spend cash and like what's what's your methodology methodology around like your financing sure um so i use uh just a little bit of credit uh but not too much uh i try to pay it off uh at the end of every month okay um just so i can play catch up from my customers that may be on a 15 to 30 day uh pay scale uh for me um i do have some bigger accounts that i let them get, get to 30 days just because they have so many trucks um but um, so I, I use a little bit of credit just to catch up from, you know, getting paid back from them. Yeah. Uh, but I don't use much. Got it. Do you do fleets like you have like fleets that come here and get service? As yes, well? I do. I, yeah, I do. I have a lot of uh, fleet accounts and uh, we also we also do. I didn't mention it before. I do have a uh, mobile service where I will go and uh, we will hand wash, you know, pressure wash uh fleets uh we try to stick to at least 40 or more you know it has to make sense money has to make sense yeah so if you have a bigger fleet we can go out on site and we can wash there do you offer a discount for your for your fleets like on service at all uh i will just a little bit um since i am using their water right uh because i can't truck all the water in that's you know it's just not possible i will offer a little bit of discount uh for using their water um but it's it's more of a convenience factor okay. uh, versus a discount. Uh, okay. You know, the trucks don't have to move. I can make it happen wherever the trucks are parked. I have enough, um, you know, line hose to be able to reach you okay. know, up to a thousand feet. So if the trucks are parked, I can they can I can take care of it from there. OK, got it. All right, so we, we, we talked about the economics a little bit. We talked about the, the, the wash isn't really any money in there. The oil chains, you said, what what do you said your margins are on oil chains? was roughly like a range. Um, as far as like what I make? Yeah, what uh, you make? You're looking at about 20%. Okay, all right, that's fair. And then what are the other services, the oil chains, and what else? Oil changes, I mean, we do uh, repairs as far as brake changes, shocks. Um, as far as the, other, the rest of the stuff with PMs, you know, coolant flushes, uh, transmission flushes, you know, rear ends, stuff like that. Okay. Changes. Give some advice to some of the, the carriers and owner operators out here when they're think of, thinking about that type of stuff, like, you know, brake changes. How can they save? How, what's what's the best way that they save money, right, for maintenance on their on their vehicles? So <clears throat> if you're looking at a brake change specifically, um, you know, I tell all my customers, I, the only thing I use as far as parts uh, like that is USA made products. Um, I've seen, uh, I've, I've had too many customers come in after they just had their brakes changed less than a month and they maybe used a, uh, a Chinese brand or a brand from a different country and it only lasted them a month. Mm. Uh, so I said, you know, I only use the good stuff. So my prices may be a little bit higher than my competition, <laughs> yeah. but I use the best. I will only use the best. I do not want to use, you know, I don't want to 
go halfway and cut corners by using uh, a cheaper product. And then you come back to me a month later and say, Hey, Daryl, you know, what the heck? My, right. my brakes aren't working. They're not a hundred percent. It's only been a month. Right. So I don't cut corners. We don't cut corners and I don't, you know, we don't go halfway. You know, I use the best of the best. It's not the cheapest stuff, but it's going to last you and you're going to get, you know, the best bang for your buck. You So you see that happening a lot out there. A lot. You know, they go to a, either a truck parts store or wherever, you know, down the road and they, you know, you know, it's $400 cheaper by using a different, you know, off off brand yeah. or off, you know, you know, whatever. And they're not getting, you know, the best bang for their buck. GTT Commercial Tires is a tire store that's designed with the owner-operator in mind. It serves as a helpful community where you are always their number one priority. Whether you're a new owner-operator or you've been driving for years, their mission is the same, to keep owner-operators in business. That's why they go above and beyond providing superior customer service when you actually need it, educating you on proper tire care and delivering a no BS sales experience. With two conveniently located stores in Richmond and Petersburg, Virginia, and almost 2,000 five-star Google reviews, they are truly raising the bar and setting a new standard in tire care. Make sure you call 1-800-991-6251 to schedule your appointment now and tell them Truck and Hustle sent you. So is that a question that they should ask? Like if, let's say they're not, they're not with you, hopefully they, they, they shop with you, but if they're not, Hey man, where's this, where's this bricks made? Like what's going on? Absolutely. They and should absolutely. They ask should that. definitely ask that. What else? Talk, what's some other things that where they can save? Um, Any, so anything with oil, we'll get it. You, you, you go oil too. Um, you know, <clears throat> so I do offer a bulk oil versus a gallon jug oil. It's cheaper. But the only thing that makes it cheaper is it's not in the gallon jug. Okay. So the big thing, you know, that I hear is uh, bulk oil, you know, in my, I have 2,000 gallon tank uh, oil, uh, you know, that's that's out there. And, um, you know, drivers automatically think it's used oil mm. and or recycled oil. Right. And, you know, I'm sure there are people out there that cut corners by using recycled oil, um, but that's just not the way we operate. We haven't been here for 36 years by cutting corners right. or doing it the wrong way. Uh, we do things hundred percent the right way. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's just a cheaper way, a cheaper cost versus going through the gallon jug. It's the exact so it just appears as if it would be like use oil because just the, the packaging that it's in is what you're saying. Sure. Right. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I try to offer, you know, there's a significant, uh, you know, uh, difference in the pricing because, you know, the manufacturer has to put it in a gallon jug right. or a five gallon bucket, then put it on a pallet and then ship it with a totally different shipper where I get it in a bulk truck and they just pump it into my, you know, tank. Got it. So you, and you're able to pass that savings along to your customers. Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. What else? What are some other, other things that they should be thinking about uh, in terms of maintenance? Uh, maintenance, um, filters may be one thing. Um, so uh, with COVID happening, um we had a little bit of a, a hiccup in the oil supply, but the biggest thing that we're still that I'm still dealing with today is the filter supply. Um, at least once a month, we will go to uh, San Antonio or Dallas, and I will find uh, whatever filters I need the most to be able to run the company, and I will go out there and get them and bring them back here myself. Mm. Um, there's certain filters that. The manufacturers are just having trouble with making as far as like uh, either the paper inside of it or the um, the the metal um, for the filter oil filters and they're just having trouble I guess catching up with with doing what they need to do um, so I'll find where where I can get the filters that I need if I can't get them here in Houston and I'll go and pick them up myself in a different city okay what what are some of the you see a lot of different owner operators a lot of different you know, trucking companies come through here. What are some of the things that you notice that guys aren't doing like timely enough or that they need to make sure they need to stay on top of? Um, oil changes would be one. Um, I, I know with uh, everything going up with inflation, you know, oil has gone up, grease has gone up, filters have gone up too. Uh, so they're kind of, they're, they're, they're running that line of when they should be doing their oil changes. <laughs> right. And I get it, you know, you know, everything counts, but um you know, at the end of the day, if you take care of that truck, it will take care of you. So uh, I realize it's a big cost, but at 
three or four hundred dollars on an oil change to know you're getting it done and you know your you know air filters you know they're they're letting their air filters go way past what they need to mm. at you know 60 to 120 dollars depending on what kind of truck you have on an air filter let your motor breathe you know it's it's a it's a cheap cost you know at 60 dollars or 80 dollars on an air filter to let your motor breathe and run versus having that air filter collapse and then you have a motor blow up and then you're paying Twenty to forty thousand dollars for a brand new motor. That's right. What, what's what's your prescribed schedule for oil changes, uh, filters, so forth and so on? What do you recommend? Uh, oil changes. I recommend ten thousand miles uh, on you know a regular uh, oil if you're, it's not running a full synthetic. Um, we do offer a full synthetic here, but it's very rarely because it's it's so expensive. Um, but I recommend ten thousand miles. On what's the difference between the two? Uh, the regular first, and a full, full synthetic. synthetic. Yeah, for as people far as, who may not understand that, like, as far as intervals. Yeah, uh, probably twenty five to thirty thousand miles. Okay, uh, but you're looking at double the double, price. Double the price. Okay, uh, depending on what kind of truck you have too, and the filters and stuff. Okay, um, air filters depending on where and what kind of uh, uh, transportation type of transportation you in. You're in if you're on uh, rock yards, dirt yards all day. You might look into doing it every month to two months uh just depend just depending if you're on the open road you can probably get away with you know every three to four oil changes okay got it who do you service more do you service more like oil guys i know this is houston so <laughs> this is big big oil man in I, get, I get a lot of uh i get a lot of everything i get a lot of cement guys um pipe uh pipe haulers um we get a lot of oil guys too so Okay. It varies, but we get we get a lot of everything. Just a little bit of everything. Got you. What's what's some of the challenges about running this business that if you had to think of some that's that keeps you up at night? What are some of the you know the, the, the tough the tough parts about this business? Uh, the tough thing is uh, you know battling the uh, you know my suppliers uh, on pricing because you know everything goes up and uh, so what I'm having to do uh, is I'm having to buy to get the the best price that I can possibly get. I have to buy a tanker of oil and a tanker of oil is 6,500 gallons at a time. Mm. So when you're looking at 10 to $12 a gallon, that's over $70,000. You know, I'm having to write a check for at one time. Right. And that's, you know, every six to eight weeks. Got it. Uh, just to be able to get the best pricing point I can for my customers. Um, same thing with packaged oil. I'm having to buy, you know, truckload at a time uh, to get the best, best price I can get. Um, and to be able to compete with my competitors also. That always was the case, though. Like, you didn't always buy it like that. I used to never buy it like that. When, I used when, to buy it just you, when I needed it. When did you, oh, so like when did you start having to do that? Uh, when the prices started, started really going up, uh, probably towards the end of 19. 19? Rep, yeah. What was the cause of that, that made the prices go up like that? Uh, the causes was, uh, supply chain issues. It was like right there as, at the start of COVID, you know, beginning of COVID. Okay. Um, you know, everyone was... Um, worried for obviously good reason now. Um, so, you know, we just not knowing what, how the country was going to be, I started having to buy, you know, months at a time, uh, ahead. So, I mean, I have filters that will, that will last me several months ahead. Um, and I continue to buy even weekly and monthly to make sure I'm always ahead of the game, uh, as far as pricing and, you know, supply chain issues, if there is any in the future. Got it. Do you ever have a, a down period in this business, or are you kind of like, like is, is is seasonal at all? Or it's it's uh it's strange. Usually uh, Thanksgiving to Christmas time is usually um, a slow time, but this year was actually really busy. Yeah, because <laughs> so was... nobody cared about Christmas this year. Like yeah. the holidays were very weird this year. Like Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. I think everybody's like just like business as usual. Business as usual. <laughs> it was uh, so it was kind of weird, but it was uh, it was a blessing for sure, knowing that the whole Christmas week we were. Slammed with, with still business. jumping, still jumping. But typically, that's when you guys kind of slow down, right? And uh, tax season around April usually kind of slow down. Okay. Um, I think mo mostly because drivers are, you know, they get their they get their ten ninety nines or yeah. what have you, and they realize they need to start, you know, maybe cutting back a little bit on something, and they save up so they can, you know, pay their taxes for the year. Right, right, <laughs> right. So when when you see those kind of drops, what do you do to kind of adjust and? you know, still pay the bills, make things work. I try to offer, you know, specials on, you know, washing or servicing and try to try to incorporate um, just anything I can do to help and just to keep, you know, 
business, you know, afloat during that time. Yeah, got it. Um, so you're uh, as what percent is like your employee cost of your business? Like uh, for staff? Uh, for staff, I would say about fifteen to twenty percent. Okay. Got it. So that's definitely a pretty major cost. Yeah. The big cost is, you know, oil today. Oh, right. Oil being so expensive, that's a big chunk of it. That's probably about like 40% or? Yeah, close to about it. About 40%. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Then what will be the other one? So that's 40 is, is oil, 20 is staff. Yeah. Uh, water. Water. You're looking at probably another 15, 15%, maybe 15 to 20%. Uh, filters are in there. Okay. Um, and then just, you know, between electricity, water, and uh, cleaning these grit traps out every month. Uh, that's that's probably the rest. Because somebody else does that, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you grow and scale from here, or do you want to grow and scale from here? What what's like the like the outlook on? Do you, do you like the location as it is, or what are your future plans for the business? I would absolutely love to grow and scale. Right now, it's a little tougher being with the market what it is with oil and filters and and not knowing what um, this year has in store for trucking. Um, you know, you, you read and hear about things on different different avenues of, of truckers and what they're going through. I talk to truckers every day when they're here, and um, it seems like the work is there, but obviously they're not getting paid what they should get paid. Um, and so it's it's tough to gauge. Um, so yes, to answer your uh, question, I would love to grow, but right now it's kind of iffy because yeah. uh, everything is so high with inflation. Property is and uh everything else so it's kind of as far as that it's i wouldn't say it's a standstill it's just kind of a a waiting game yeah yeah so what what does that look like for you does does that look like another location does it look like you know is there opportunity on this property to do more like what does growing look like for you sure i can definitely do more here on this location um and uh another location is definitely in the works uh just have to find that location i don't want to settle for just any location i find <laughs> obviously it's got to make sense so right right what's what's some interesting areas for you uh katie out that way towards brookshire is a possibility uh maybe to stay over here on the east side would be a good possibility too then wouldn't be so far of a drive for me to check on one or the other right, right. so got you in terms of management are you the only manager or do you, does anybody else in the family still work in the business uh so is you said you had brothers right? I, I have a younger brother okay uh but he went a different route and okay. uh he's he's real 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 way smarter than me he's a he's a chemical engineer okay so he graduated college he gra- <laughs> oh yeah he did he went to texas a&m and uh he did his thing over there so okay okay cool so I'm, but i'm sure you guys are both doing okay for yourselves you yes, know sir. what i'm saying for sure all right do you, you have kids i do i have a uh, two-year-old daughter she'll be two actually uh here in another month okay and then i have uh, a son on the way okay he'll be uh he'll be here in april got it so i'm sure there's plans to let them continue in the business at some point right? <laughs> we'll see if they we'll, want we'll, to we'll see what happens we'll see okay cool 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 all right man um love the rundown is there anything else that we think we missed about the about the business that you want to touch on and let people kind of know about what you guys have going on here i want to make sure that we cover cover kind of everything i know we talked about all the different services um for sure um I think we covered a lot. What do you What do you think? I think so. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we. I didn't. I don't know if I harped uh, too much on it, but uh, truck detailing. Okay, you do detailing also. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, like, uh, there's a you know a lot of uh, a lot of the dealerships around here. Uh, they have me clean up their used trucks before they get ready to sell them. Okay. Um, so uh, you I know, know there's, a, there's a big uh, truck dealer right here. Yep, right Pride? next right next door. Do you do uh, work with them? Pride and their aero truck sales right next door okay. to me too. We've been doing aero truck sales for almost thirty years. Okay. We wash, uh, uh, detail, and service all their trucks, every single truck that they have, uh, for the last thirty years before they get ready to sell them. Got it. I'm sure that's nice to have them right there. <laughs> it is. It's very nice to have them next door. <laughs> you can't beat that at all. Yes, sir. But all the other dealerships we uh, we deal with too, we clean up their used trucks before they get ready to to resell them. Okay. So uh, you know, if you have a truck that needs to be cleaned inside outside you know can't promise that it'll be uh brand spanking new if you have a 20 something year old truck but we can get it as close as possible so got it got it are you able to share revenue like an idea what you guys make here uh sure yeah we do a little over two million a year okay okay Mm -hmm. 
Nice, sounds good. So, all right, very good, man. Well, the the, d- the grind is there. So. Nah, you got the, you work hard for that the, two million, man. That's right. You, you know, working hard the, for that. The profit margin has uh, slimmed down a little bit uh, the last two years with COVID and pricing going up. We've gotten busier, but with busy with more work comes more bills, comes higher bills, yeah, and everything like that. So the profit margin has has definitely decreased a little bit. Um, so you just gotta, you know, we gotta power through that. Guys, so. do, you, do you remember what you guys were doing when you first started? Uh, I could not tell you. So uh, it was, it was a totally different time when my dad yeah. was running things. My dad had up more than this location at the time. Got it. So uh, it was a little bit different than got today. It. Got it. There's got more it. competition now. So okay, okay, cool, amazing, man. Well, the the business is amazing. I mean, we're gonna take a tour of the place and just kind of. You know, show what's going on around here. Yep. Uh, in customary truck and hustle fashion, we always have to give a final thought before we let our guests go, which is basically just some entrepreneurial advice. It could be spiritual. It could be, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to wherever you want to come from. And then let everybody know where they can connect with you and learn more about Houston Truck Wash and, and connect with you guys. Maybe get some offers, some sales. Maybe you'll give them an offer in this video to come check you out. Absolutely. Um, so let's do that. Let's start with where they can connect with you. OK, uh, I am on Instagram at Houston Truck Wash. Uh, we're on Facebook too, but not not as much as Instagram. Instagram's kind of the, the bread and butter. Uh, Facebook, Houston Truck Wash and Lube. Uh, Instagram, at Houston Truck Wash. And uh, that's where you can connect with me. Okay, got you. And then the final thought, think hard about it. You got to leave You gotta leave the hustle fan with a jewel. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. If, uh, you know, if you want to make it in this, you're all... If you want to make it in this trucking industry, uh, it's all about what you give. You know, mm. if you give 110 percent, you will get 110 percent out of it. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta save for the rainy days because um, there will be rainy days, especially here in Houston. Um, so all I can say is work hard, grind hard. That's right. That's what the fam's been doing, man, for 30, 40, 50 years now, man. And That's right. Obviously, this is a manifestation of that hard work, man. Daryl, it was a pleasure being here, man. Thank you for having us on Thank site. Thank you for being here. And uh, we appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Hustle fam, you know what we do around this time. If you smell something burning, it's only a desire. Myself, Mr. Daryl, and Houston Truck Wash and Lube, we are out. What? I was going to say, I was going to do, I forgot, I completely forgot about an uh, offer. Oh, offer. Oh, well, now let's do it. Let's okay. get an offer. All right. Let's get an offer. Let's go ahead. Yeah, so 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 Daryl, man, hopefully you you know, for the all the hustle fam watching in, in Houston and surrounding areas, maybe you could hook them up with a little something for, for checking out the show. Um what, what we got? Absolutely. So if you if you come here to Houston Truck Wash and you mention truck and hustle, I will give five dollars off a truck wash. I will give ten dollars off an oil change. And if you do a uh, break change with me, I will give $50 off. Look at that. Look at that. Always showing love. Make sure you mention Truck and Hustle when you come check them out at Houston Truck Wash. Man, this company has been around forever. Obviously doing great things because the retention shows it, right? Because you, you, you guys have a great business. So check them out, Hustle Fam. Again, if you smell something burning, it's only a desire. Myself, Daryl, we are out. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go.